Hey YouTube, welcome back to another video. So we have here is an Apple Watch Series 3 that I bought for $9.54. Let's take a look. So here's the listing. I did indeed get it for $9.54. That's including tax. Um, I put a best offer in. Um, but yeah, here's what it looks like. You can see there's severe water damage in the display. Um, they say it's locked, but they're saying that because they don't really know because it doesn't turn on. So we are going to be taking a look at this. After watching um, Zach from Jerry Rig fix um, that watch from what's inside that was in the river for nine months, I always wanted to get a water damaged watch. So when I saw one for so cheap, locked or not, I was like, wow, it's really cheap and really water damaged. Um, I might as well buy it. Um, what concerns me is the one layer of bubble wrap. I, I hope it isn't cracked. Okay, good, it's not. Um, so here it is. There's some scratches here. But yeah, you can see this like um, shiny gold ring which happens when they're left in for a while. And you can see the red crown. So this is a cellular model. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do, which you shouldn't do, but I am curious enough. Like who knows if they actually tried to turn this on or not. Oh my gosh, <laughs> did you see that? No way. So it only lit up for a split second and then you know I was able to get it to light up for just a split second again. Um, so this is usually um, an indicator of a bad battery. So I'm going to be opening this up, removing the corrosion, and then trying out a new battery. I mean, take a look at this. See all that dirt and corrosion that's just build up? Obviously these are water resistant, but you can't just, you know, leave it I bet this was in a river or something. And this um, seller I bought this from has a bunch of watches with similar rings on the screen. So I assume whoever is selling these is probably like one of those people who, you know, uh, metal detect in rivers or something. I have never worked on an Apple Watch in my life. So this is gonna be kind of scary. I have an iFixit guide on my iPad and back here and I have a blade which you're supposed to use for the screen. So yeah, let's jump right into this, I guess. So I've always heard that it's very easy to crack the display getting it off, but with just a little bit of heat, I was able to pry it up pretty easy. Although I assume the reason it was so easy for me is because the water damage probably greatly um, weakened the adhesive seal because obviously water got in it, so it's probably not super effective anymore. Okay, this came off pretty easy. Um, probably because the water damaged it and oh my god you know how on earth this showed any signs of life is beyond me I mean that's really impressive um, and the battery is very very swollen to no surprise um, which would probably be our issue here in case it wasn't obvious maybe I should have mentioned this earlier don't follow this as a guide, please. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm following an iFixit guide right here for a reason because I have no idea what I'm doing. So this is just for entertainment. If you are trying to fix your uh, Apple Watch, go to iFixit and look at their guides. So usually before I uh, use any isopropyl alcohol or anything, I removed the battery, but the screws were so rusted that I was afraid I'd strip them if I didn't clean them off first. So I took some isopropyl alcohol, cleaned everything up, um, and then I removed the screws, which thankfully did not strip when coming out. So now with the screw out of the way, I can peel up this sticker covering the Taptic engine, which will allow me to disconnect the force touch sensor, which did end up breaking, and the battery. So as you can see here, the battery is extremely water damaged, obviously it's completely dead. Um, so I'm definitely gonna have to get a new battery for this. So here I am just now taking the display off You have to be very careful because those ribbon cables are not connected to the screen They're connected to the logic board. So if you do damage them, you kind of have to solder new ones on It's a pretty bad design in my opinion um, But anyways, yeah, I'm very carefully removing those connectors As you can see here the body of the watch is very corroded even after uh, me trying to clean some of it out and the display is also looking really bad and I'm surprised it even lit up to begin with.
I then um, tried to clean the uh, back of the screen um, with isopropyl alcohol um, as well as the watch body and the flex cables where the display connects. Um, using isopropyl alcohol on the screen directly could cause you know water spots or other damage but I mean the screen's so messed up and damaged already so I figured I might as well because it definitely has to be cleaned so yeah I mean it definitely is still very corroded after me cleaning it but it is a little bit better. Um, so I was just looking around at the batteries I had because I didn't have a replacement watch battery and I realized that if you hold it in place it doesn't clip in but if you hold it in just the right spot the Samsung Galaxy S6 battery strangely fits and will power on the watch um, and as you can see here um, I spent a lot of time just trying to hold it in place but it still unfortunately was boot looping um, but then I was like oh maybe the battery is just being weird because of the battery so I did end up um, buying a new battery but I did try this first which I thought it was interesting that it technically does fit if you hold it just right. I'm going to try, you know, force restarting it as you can see here. Nothing worked. Um, just in case there was like board damage that was causing it to not boot, I took the display off and decided to soak the Apple Watch in isopropyl alcohol. And then I tried it later and it still didn't work. So then I soaked it in isopropyl alcohol for even longer. Still didn't work. So I was like, okay, I need the new battery. So this is just the footage of me testing the watch after soaking in isopropyl alcohol. Um, and as you can see, it still doesn't boot. I'm not sure if this is um, me trying after the first isopropyl soak or the second. I think it was the first, but I don't need to show you this every time because, yeah, it didn't end up doing anything. It just was endlessly boot looping. Okay, so I'm back. I don't know if I mentioned this in the last clip, but I decided to buy a proper battery as well as like a new adhesive seal and everything just to see if maybe that new battery, you know, the proper battery will fix it. So even after charging this new battery, I couldn't get it to hold a charge at all. Even after charging it overnight, I just couldn't get it to hold a charge. So the next thing that I'm going to try is using my external battery charger to see if that makes a difference. Unfortunately, this battery must have died from sitting in storage too long because it won't hold a charge even after externally charging it overnight. So the battery started to like expand slightly um, and obviously I got a defective battery but the place I bought it from makes you pay return shipping so at that point it just wasn't worth it. I did try to jumpstart it using another technique. Um, I basically just took um, like I wired up the positive and negative to five volts, which definitely isn't safe and I don't recommend you try it, but it did jumpstart the battery and it actually started holding a charge. Um, and because of that, I can confirm that even with a new battery, it doesn't hold a charge. Um, and a few days later, the watch stopped turning on altogether, won't show any signs of life. So yeah, this watch is definitely a lost cause, but it was fun to work with it. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next one.